Hello everybody. Today we're going to do the fifth video in my series on restoring a Stanley bench plane. Let's see what part's next. The old plane was pretty much a disaster. We've done the bottom, the frog, the iron, and the iron cap. Next up, the lever cap. Just like my three stunning wood wigs, Stanley made three different styles of lever cap. If you want to get into the Nittenoy details, there are more, but basically at first glance it's three. Left to right, oldest to newest. The one on the left is, is ended in the early 1920s with the one in the middle picking up. That one ran through to the 30s and after that you got the one on the right which is the newest one. The one in the middle is the most popular with collectors because that's the one that goes on the sweetheart plane. And there's a look at the back side, old to new, left to right. The newer lever caps were all nickel plated. The nickel plating on the new ones, especially this one here, is usually pretty much shot. Other than my sandblaster and wire wheel, these are the basic tools I'm going to use. I've got a homemade scraper, a couple sanding blocks, 150 and 3000 grit, a wire brush, and some 150 grit sandpaper. The first thing to do, get your scraper out, scrape the rust from the flat surface. Make sure you've got a good burr on your scraper before you start. I showed you how to do that in the first video of this series when I showed you how to make a scraper. The front edge of this one is the worst of them all. So it's going to take the most scraping, but it's well worth the effort. After scraping about as much as you can off the, the top, what you want to do is turn it over and and work the sides. Same thing. Remove all of that thick rust until you get down some nice clean metal. Front done, I go on to the back. Same idea. Anywhere there's a flat part I can scrape, I scrape it. I even get up on the underside of the lever. Get some of that off. And this is what it looks like after the scraping. I've restored so many planes and other old tools that for me it's well worth the investment to have a sandblaster. Whoa, that's scary! Here's how it looks after the blasting. It's made quite the transformation so far. After you finish the blasting you want to take some compressed air and you want to blow that lever, the hinge portion out because there will be lots of grit in there. I just work it back and forth while hitting it with air. Next, it's on to the 150 grit paper on a sanding block. First thing I'm going to hit is this lever cap spring. Sanding in one direction. If they're not pitted, these springs clean up pretty easy. I use the corner of the paper to get down in beside that big rivet that comes through as much as I can. And then I use the flap to take it all the way out to the front. When you switch over to the front, you want to be careful that you keep the center part of the lever, this flat part right here, flush with the outside part. Otherwise, it's going to start putting a, a curve or a round over to it that is going to be really difficult to get out. I'm initially going to clean it off with 150 grit. If there's any nickel re remaining, you're going to want to take it all off. And the lapping station it is. The fitting on this thing towards the front is quite deep so this is the only way I'm going to get it out. Nice long strokes and as I as I sand I'm, I'm rocking this up and down never hitting the same angle all the time that way you don't mess it up. I'm going to pause for a second in my lapping workout to show you what I hope you can see the difference between where the nickel plating is and where it isn't. The discoloration that's around these edges is still some remaining nickel. So all of that is what you want to get off. And I want you to see when I'm sanding, concentrating on this area right here, I'm holding it flat and I'm holding the lever flat. Two hands, sliding it back and forth, keeping both parts flat. When you're ready to do the lever, what you're going to do is keep this, this part off the sandpaper and concentrate on this end right here. And it's just by rocking it back and forth. 
there's a better look at how to do it. When you're happy with the front side, use your, lap, use your lapping paper to do these flat outer edges. Keep it at the uh, 90 degrees. Check it to make sure that you're putting pressure in the right part. One side done, finishing up side number two. And this is what it looks like so far. Next thing I want to do is take my 150 grit on a sanding block and clean up this edge we haven't hit yet because it's curved. Remember not to round the edges over. And the edge is cleaned up pretty good. Next it's on to the wire wheel to clean up this underside real good. So the wire wheel is done and I used the dental pick to remove some of the orange paint that was stuck in some of the corners in the Stanley logo. Next step is to finish smoothing up the front side on some 1000 grit paper. Sand one direction over the entire flat surface. You want to work the curved end of the lever the same way you did on the 150 grit and the same thing for the sides. And now I'm going to repeat the process on 3000 grit. And that's it for the lapping station. And that should be a shine that your mother would be proud of. But I'm not done yet. Now I go back to 3000 on my sanding block to even it out. I'm sanding straight because I don't want to get swirls in this because it's nice and smooth. You want to get that 3000 grit in that curved edge also. And that's got it looking pretty good. But we're not done yet. You gotta take it back over to the buffer. I use a high gloss cleaning and polishing compound on my buffer. And after I was done, I cleaned off the excess buffing compound with some steel wool. And I cleaned it out of the Stanley logo with a toothbrush and some simple green. And just dry it off with a blue shop towel and blow it out with some air to make sure it's good and dry. The next thing I'm going to do is go over to my lapping station and run this front flat edge over it and true up, flatten this leading edge right here. For that front edge, you want to keep your lever cap straight up and down. Run it back and forth a few times. So that looks good. For this part of the lever cap right here, the part that comes in contact with the iron cap, you want to have that flat on your lapping paper. You can rock them back and forth, get a feeling where it's at, put pressure there, and then you're going to slide it back and forth. You want to maintain even downward pressure while doing this so as not to change the flatness of what the original lever cap had. In the finished product, the difference is obvious. It's nice and flat like it should be. It's going to make contact with the cap iron and straight down to the iron. Next I'm going to prep the lever cap for paint. Orange paint. It goes around the Stanley logo. There's what you need. Some tape and an orange paint that will match the original color. Prep for paint and onto my high tech paint booth. You want your lever cap to be sitting so it's as level as possible where the Stanley logo is because the paint is going to kind of flow into there and fill it up. I'm going to do the paint in one coat, one coat only, nice and thick. You can see how it's settling out and the Stanley letters are barely showing through the paint. There's another look. Barely see the letters coming through the paint. That's how you want it. Now all we can do is wait a while for it to dry before we can finish this lever cap up. Now that the paint is dried, I can use my scraper, the sanding sponge, and some 3000 grit to remove the excess paint. The scraper does a good job getting the paint off. Just remember to hold it at this angle, slide it across the top, and you're going to see paint coming off all the letters. That's it for the scraper. Next thing you want to do, take the sanding sponge and you're going to do this to get any other orange that you can see off. And then you go to the 3000 grit paper. 
make sure that any shine that you might have removed is coming back. The last thing I do is take a little air, blow that out, and there's how she looks. Pretty much like it did when it came out of the factory. The next thing to do is unleash my dirty oil rag. Here's what goes in it. Buy it at Home Depot. I'm going to put it on that lever cap every nook and cranny. You've exposed metal that hasn't been exposed ever on this lever cap. Same on all the parts that we do this type of restoration. So you got to get something on there to stop them from rusting. After that nice thick coat of oil sits for a while, you're going to wipe it off. I use the blue shop towel, it's a paper towel. Any place I can't get with that, I'm going to use some Q-tips. Here's how it looks with the oil removed. What I like about the dirty oil is it takes the backside that just didn't look right before you put the dirty oil on and it's kind of give it a little bit more aged look. And my dirty oil is dirty because I've used that same rag for probably six years. I use it on everything. So it picks up a fair amount of rust and dirt and grime and it's mixed in with the, the oil and it gives you a nice effect in the end. Before we put the wax on, there's one thing I almost forgot to point out. On some of the lever caps, there's a groove. It comes right across, it's hard to see, this one's almost gone, but it's right there. They range from about here up to about here. Most of them are aligned perfectly with the top of the, the cap right here. So it's a, a groove across the lever. You can put that back in, it's pretty simple to do. This being a new lever cap, may have never had the groove there. But I'm going to put one in right here. What you'll need is a file and a steady hand. I'm going to line that edge of the file up right where I want it. Hold everything in place and slide it straight across. As soon as I slide it, it's starting to cut and make the line. You can see it already. I can, I can slide it back into the line, give it a couple more passes, and stop right there because I've got it. When you uh, start sanding on these things, that line will disappear most of the time. Take the file, steady hand, put it back in. And if you're wondering why that line is there, I have absolutely no idea. And of course, this one isn't supposed to have it, but it's not a collector's plane. It's going to be a user, so I'm not worried about it. Next thing to do and the last thing to do is give it a coat of wax. I'm going to put the wax on the entire thing, let it dry, and wipe it off. First I wipe it with a paper towel and then I like to go to the microfiber and give it a good buffing. And the finished product is quite presentable. Even the hard to get places cleaned up and looking good. I mean, it clearly has an excellent shine. It's almost back as good as, if not better, than when it was nickel plated. But it's never going to be as good as it was when it was nickel plated because now you've got raw steel. This is going to darken with time. It's going to be prone to rust more than it was with nickel. So it's going to require attention and, and care to keep it looking good, like any tool should. So the lever cap is put in the lineup with the other parts that are done. Next video is going to be on the tote knob and then we're going to put this old plane back together again in a video by itself because this plane is going to be for the next quarterly giveaway. The lever cap is done, the cat's out of the bag. The next plane I'm going to give away in December is a Stanley number no. 5. It's the one we've been working on doing this whole series of videos. I've given away a number 3 in June. I'm giving away a number 4 in September. You can sign up for that drawing by finding that video in my list of videos, the number four giveaway. So I hope you enjoyed this video. The next one is going to be on the tote and knob. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. That's it. Time for supper. Bye.